Hey, what's going on video editors, designers, creative professionals in general. Today, we're looking at the Dell XPS 9300. One of the latest models released by Dell. Is this a laptop suitable for graphic design, photography, video editing, etc.? We're going to jump into that right now. If you're new to the channel, I'm Benji Kaiser and you're watching Don't Tech With Me, a place where you're going to get the latest tech news and tech terms demystified for creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. The Dell XPS 9300. The first thing to note when it comes to this new model released by Dell is that it is not the Dell XPS 137390. Just to clear up that confusion, we're going to dive more into why that matters later in the video. But right now, we're looking just at a basic spec walkthrough, and then we're going to talk about how this laptop handles tasks for designers, photographers, and, say, videographers. Okay, so this laptop comes with the latest i5-1035G1 or the i7-1065G7. Now, the reason that this is a big step for designers and video editors and photographers is that G1 is a G1 and G7 are improved uh, graphics coprocessors, so they're integrated GPUs into the CPU. In the past, the models on this Dell XPS 13 have not been uh, my favorite to recommend, and I've also I've often hesitated. For graphic designers and photographers, I think the older i7 8265U, uh, um, actually it's the i5 8265U, and then the i7 8565U, if I'm not mistaken on those numberings. Um, they've been good for graphic designers and photographers, but not so much video editing. Um, but this new i5-35G1 and the 65G7 are better for graphic design. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be able to go out and rock you know, big 4K projects, but you're going to definitely be able to do some 1080p video editing on these processors. Um, now, the i5 has the Intel Ultra HD G1, which is improved with 32 cores, uh, that is GPU computing cores, rather than the 24. And then the Intel uh, has, the i7 has the Intel Iris Plus G7, which has the 64 cores. Now this model starts at eight gigs of RAM. That's a good place to start. Um, honestly, I've talked a lot in my videos about graphic designers and photographers starting at eight gigs of RAM. That's a really good sweet spot to get started. If you want to do more, uh, at the same time. So if you want to open like Adobe InDesign, Adobe Photoshop, and Illustrator at the same time, I encourage you to go up to 16 gigs of RAM uh, because as you open more programs, it pulls more away from the RAM memory and your computer will oftentimes run slower if you do not have more RAM memory paired up with a good processor. Now, if you're curious more about RAM and what is a processor and cores, I've created all kinds of videos like that on this channel. You can check it out in the YouTube cards above. But for now, let's keep moving on about the Dell XPS 93. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is this thing comes with 12 hours of battery life on web browsing and more like 6 to 8 hours of battery life while designing and video editing. The color gamut range is good. It's not great. It comes with a 90% sRGB and a 63% Adobe RGB and these specs come from notebookcheck.net. So if you're curious more about that. Now, also, if you're curious, as we're working through this video about pricing or really the in-depth specs, anything I don't cover here, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link, that is an affiliate link, so I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you, and that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way, and I always appreciate when you guys use those links. All right, looking back at the... 9300 comes with Windows Precision drivers on the trackpad and the traditional carbon fiber key deck. So what we're seeing is a lot of reminiscence of the Dell XPS 13 7390, but this is again not that model. This is a different model. And we're going to talk about why that's actually a positive here in just a minute. So this comes with two Thunderbolt ports and one micro SD card slot as well as a headphone jack. So not a lot of port selection, but again, you can bring in a dongle similar to that MacBook Pro life and get the ports you need off of your dongle. Okay, now let's talk about the processor and why I think this is good for video editing and graphic design. Right here, we're looking at the past i5 model in the Dell XPS 13. So this is the i5-8265U, and here's the latest that is in the new Dell XPS 9300. 
So it has that 1035G1, and we're seeing a 25% boost in performance from this new processor. Now that's gonna make a difference when it comes to video editing because that graphics coprocessor is gonna allow you to run a little bit smoother in the timeline. If you're editing 1080p, then we get a little faster export times. So this processor is an improvement for designers, photographers, and video editors. All right, now we're gonna be comparing the Dell XPS 15 9570, roughly a two-year-old model, versus the Dell XPS 15 9300. And as you see, we have the i7-8750H for the Dell XPS 15, and of course, our 1035G1 for the 9300. This is gonna be a better processor for multitasking, say you wanna run Premiere Pro, Adobe InDesign, Adobe Photoshop, be surfing the web, and listening to stuff on Spotify all at the same time. This is gonna be your go-to processor. With six cores and 12 threads, it's gonna be better for multitasking because you have more cores in your CPU, which allows you to do more tasks at the same time, and the CPU can split up the tasks evenly across the CPU. This one is not going to have that. This one's gonna have four cores and eight threads, which is good for multitasking, but not as good as the i7-8750. I will note that this is a newer processor, so they've developed newer technology, which makes this processor on the outlook or on the inlook, whatever you want to say, it makes it look slightly faster because it does have some faster boost clocks. But overall, this processor will be faster for multitasking. So I don't want you to be confused thinking, oh wow, 3% faster. This is going to be like way better for video editing and all that. Yeah, it will be good at video editing, but multitasking is not going to be his strongest point. So I just want to give that comparison. This is going to be a great computer for video editing, 1080p, but you're not going to be able to open up all the different programs like you would in this Dell XPS 15. So great improvements, but still there's some bonuses for going for that bigger H series processor. <clears throat> all right, now we're going to look at the i7 10710U versus the i5 1035G1. All right, this is the processor that is currently, let me show you here real quick, that is currently in the Dell XPS 13. Where is that? Right here. This one. Okay. This is a processor that's in the Dell XPS 13 laptop. Okay. And this looks pretty good. I mean, it's a good price compared to, you know, one of these. So, so this is the base model and it's $1,200. And this is like the top of the line and it's $1,350. So let's talk through this a little bit. As you see here, this processor is slightly faster and that's due to the graphics coprocessing that we're seeing in this processor. This i7 10710U is an i7, so that must be faster, right? Well, technically no, because this is a mobile U processor. This does not have the graphics coprocessing, which gives this a boost in performance over here. And this is where I don't want you to be confused on which model you should buy. Okay. So if you come here to the Dell XPS 13, you're like, man, I've got an i5 processor. Man, Ben says that's a really good processor. Um, and I can save, let's see what we got here, like $400 by getting this Dell XPS. Yes, but the issue is you have a U processor. So it is not as powerful as this base model with the G1. This base model technically outperforms this high-end model, but that doesn't mean that this model is outperforming this model here. So that's the thing you have to be aware of when searching for this laptop. Make sure you're looking at the correct laptop. Make sure you go into the specs and say, okay, what processor does this have? Because if it's, on, if it's a great deal, and I put that in air quotes here, I'll pull up myself here. If it's a great deal, but it's not the right processor, you're not gonna get the performance you anticipated. So make sure when you're searching for this laptop that you're searching for the correct one. You're getting the new XPS 13, which is the 9300, not the Dell XPS 13, which is the Dell XPS 7390. So that's very important to distinguish between, uh, I want to make sure you guys are making the right decision on your purchase. Um, and I'm not going to continue to belabor the point on that, but that is something that I really want to caution you against. The new Dell XPS 7390, the new Dell XPS 9300 is looking like a great laptop for, pho for photography and Photoshop, for designers and illustrator and InDesign, and for vi light video editing in Premiere Pro. Looking like a good buy in my opinion. Okay, lastly, which one should you get? As I said, it is important to make sure you're picking the right one. If you're gonna be doing this for professional uh, tasks, I would recommend the new XPS 9300. 
Now it's going to come with less ports. The new the Dell XPS 137390 has an extra Thunderbolt port, which could be a big bonus for you. So it comes with three Thunderbolt ports rather than one. Personally, I don't think that's necessary because you can plug a dongle in and optimize those two ports on the Dell XPS 9300. Okay, that is all we have today. You've been watching Don't Tech With Me. I'm Benji Kaiser. Again, if you're curious about the exact pricing or specs currently, because uh, prices tend to fluctuate, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. And if you do use it, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. That's what keeps this channel alive and is always the helpful content coming your way. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Shoot them down in the comments below and I'll see if I can help you with your purchase decision. All right. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Don't Tech With Me.